Hadrons are the name given to any particle made up of quarks. Protons are hadrons. Neutrons are hadrons. And so is any other baryon. A baryon is a subgroup of hadrons. Baryons are any, qua any um, hadron made up of free quarks. It's a group of free quarks held together by the strong nuclear force. Another type of hadron is a meson. Mesons are groups of two quarks. Well, no, actually, a quark and an antiquark. We say mesons are quarks, antiquarks, pairs. And they too are held together by the strong nuclear force. This short video is just going to take you through some of the other rules and give you some examples of baryons and mesons. How do we know, though, that, for example, a neutron is not a fundamental particle? Well, we've got to thank Mr. Murray Gelman, who was a particle physicist. And he was looking at the neutron and wondering, like particle physicists do, is it a fundamental particle? And he came to the same conclusion, the same experiment that other particle physicists do as well. Well, the best thing to do is to fire something at it. So he got some electrons and he accelerated them to the highest energy he could with his accelerators at the time. And he said, well, if it is a fundamental particle, the neutron, it will behave elastically. Basically, in this collision between the electron and the neutron, kinetic energy will be conserved. Well, that did not happen. What happened is now referred to as deep inelastic scattering. Deep inelastic scattering bears some resemblance to the other scattering experiment that you should be familiar with, Rutherford's alpha particle scattering experiment. But make sure that you distinguish between the two. The results, the paths that the particles take as they go through the, in this case, the neutron, look as well something pretty similar to the paths of the alpha particles through the gold foil. So this is just something roughly what they look like. Some were deflected through small angles, some straight on, some large angles. But the interesting thing was in the fact that none of these particles were behaving elastically. In other words, there was some change in kinetic energy between before the collision and after the collision. And Murray Gelman's work involved very careful analysis of those changes. And he was able to conclude that there must be at least three points within the neutron. One of those is this one, the up quark. And the other two turned out to be the down quarks. He proved because of this change in kinetic energy that there must be something else going on. There must be something which had a deeper structure. And that's why we call it deep within the neutron, inelastic because the kinetic energy was not conserved and scattering because the scattering of the bombarding particle. Let's talk about baryons then. Remember these are the groups of hadrons that have free quarks. Okay, and the obvious one to talk about will be the proton. and then the neutron. And you need to be familiar with the composition of the proton and the neutron, the quark composition. Okay, so I'm going to take you through it. The proton is made of two ups and a down. So Initially, let's work out its charge. The charge on an up is plus two thirds. Uh, the other up, another plus two thirds. And the charge on a down is minus a third. 
So overall, well, that's a charge of one. Uh, baryons like to um, have integer charge, so they always seem to add up to whole numbers. Okay, well, okay, let's just deal with the neutron first. Neutron is two downs and one up. Okay, it two has an integer charge, so if we add these up, we've got plus two thirds, that's the up. Uh, minus a third and minus a third and you know this that the charge of the neutron is zero it's neutral so remember that they're always going to add up to integer charge if it's not an integer charge then it's not a kind of feasible uh, combination of quarks and oftentimes the notation would just be up up down or down down up okay the simple way of writing down all this why do they stick together then? Why are they held together? Well, actually, this is a positive and this is a negative thing. So there's repulsion, isn't there? One of the four fundamental forces is electromagnetic force. So actually, these guys, they don't want to be together at all. They, there's a force repelling these from one another. So, well, what keeps them together then? Uh, there are these little other particles which are called gluons. And gluons are smaller lower energy particles they come in pairs and they interact between all quarks they carry the strong nuclear force they're often shown as little um, particles which are moving in between the quarks or sometimes they're shown as little kind of springs which carry the strong nuclear force and hold these things together so now you can see now why that deep inelastic scattering did not behave as if the thing was one solid particle. If you were to knock one side of this, well, inside there's this structure which different effects come into play and therefore it does not behave elastically. It's not the only thing, of course, that's inside there. There is some extra energy and that extra energy inside the baryon, inside the hadron, takes the form of photons of electromagnetic radiation so because of that electromagnetic charge because of that repulsion and attraction then we, we've got um, electromagnetic energy as well and that accounts for some of the measured mass of the baryon next um, to talk about would be the antimatter equivalency so the antiproton That's a pretty simple one for you to work out. Well, it's going to be the opposite. It's going to be an anti-up, another anti-up, and it's going to be an anti-down. Well, okay, that means its overall charge is minus one. Anti-ups have the charge minus two thirds, two minus two thirds, and plus one third is minus one. And then also you'd have an anti-neutron. just an antimatter equivalent version of a neutron so instead of being two downs and up you've got an anti up and then two anti downs pretty simple stuff really and you can work out still got zero charge slightly more interesting slightly more exotic ones then let's talk about the lambda particle Okay, which has got the symbol like this. It's a lambda naught. Uh, so therefore, draw it neutral. It consists of an up, a down, and a strange. Oops. Uh, the interesting thing about that is it is it has um, a strangeness of one then we call it a strange particle because it's got this strange particle in here and the strange is a second generation version of a down quark so again you can work out the overall charge on that double check my working as well and then well you might have a bottom lambda as well which you know is a next generation 
version of the Lambda Nought. Or sometimes the Beauty Lambda it would be called. Similar symbol, Lambda, Nought, and then the B for Beauty or Bottom. And the Beauty is a third generation version of the strange or the down so it is up down bottom and I draw the bottom a bit bigger because you know it's third generation therefore it's got more mass and there's loads of different combinations and you don't really need to remember any of them but you do need to be able to be given a list of particles or be given the code UDB for example be able to say which ones these are, work out an overall charge of that particle. Mesons next then, and remember I said to you, mesons are the quark anti quark pairs. Always one quark, one anti quark. Okay, so let's do some simple ones. The first kind of generation ones are called the pions. Okay, and there's um, three different pions. Pi naught, pi plus, and pi minus. Okay, um, there's two ways you can make a pi naught. You can make a pi naught with an up and an anti-up. And you can also make a pi naught with a down and an anti down. Makes sense. Overall charge is naught. So, how can you make a pi plus then? You should probably already be able to work that one out. Have a little go. You can pause it and have a go if you want. And how do you make a pi minus? Well, a pi plus has got to involve an up and it involves an anti down overall charge plus one pi minus well you got it right it's got to involve a down and sorry i've gone wrong with my convention there an anti down is a positive particle so therefore it should look like that and an anti up. Okay. Minus a third, minus two thirds, overall minus one. Okay, well, and then there's this strange generation of mesons, it's the kaons. Okay, and well, they've got the notation K. Kaons always involve a strange or an anti strange particle and a first generation quark. So you've got the K0, K plus, and you've got the K minus. There's only one option this time for K0, the K plus, and the K minus. So you are allowed to use uh, strange or anti-strange. All of them have got at least one strange or anti-strange. And one of the first generation quarks to make your free kaons. So pause the video, have a little go if you think you've got the idea. Well, the first one is zero, so it's got to be a down and an anti-strange. K plus has got to involve an anti-strange and an up. Okay, overall charge plus one. K minus has to be the anti up and a strange overall charge minus one. Hoping that video helped, guys. All the ads, please like, share, and subscribe. Cheers.